Hello, this is Bern, and if you're a woman in your 40s or 50s and you feel disappointed and burnt out about your dating experience and men, before you throw in the towel or start thinking there's something wrong with you, I want to offer a deeper perspective as to why you might be going through this, and better yet, share a few distinctions that can make an exponential difference in your ability to attract a conscious man and relationship you want despite the odds that you face. Hello, this is Vern. Welcome to another edition of VernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how you can attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. If you're watching this video right now, my heart's going out to you. Why? Because it means that at some level you feel that this world is not working for you. It means that you felt frustrated, burnt out, Guys have shown up in ways that you don't find exciting. You might have felt betrayal, you might have felt used, you might have felt emotionally manipulated at some level. And my goal from this video is to help you understand that despite the stuff that's going out there, there's still hope to get what you want. But to get what you want, you have to interpret life in a specific way that allows you to make the most out of what you have instead of feeling bad for what isn't the way it should be. This video is divided into two sections. The first section is going to be talking about what is challenging about the dating landscape for women in your age group. And the reason why I'm sharing this is not because I want to talk doom and gloom, but because I want you to understand that when I come to the part of the video, the second part, where I'm sharing what can be done about it, I'm not doing that in a vacuum. I'm not a person here who's blinding himself with one hand and saying that sun doesn't exist. I know what I'm talking about, having helped so many women in your situation get what they want. So when you understand fundamentally what's taking place, you can do something about it. Now, the second part of this video will be where I share the specific mindset that you can adopt if you want to make a significant dent in your capacity to get what you want, even when other women around you aren't getting it, even when you think that this is super hard, even when you may be feeling that the choices you have are between a guy who is exciting but doesn't want to go the distance or the depth and a guy who's boring, who's kind, but you're not excited to be with. If you feel at any point that you have very few choices, this video is for you. Now, the first reason, let's call it out, why you might be experiencing a big challenge in the dating landscape is, let's call it men over 40. <laughs> you're over 40 and you're connecting with men over 40. And this has a specific set of challenges. There's two types of men you will find over 40. One who probably has been married already, has been divorced, and as a result of that, has experienced some bad things and has created some bad habits. You'll also connect with a man who hasn't been married, maybe he's 45, maybe he's 50, and he's never been married, which also carries another set of challenges. Why? Because he might be incredibly more selfish and more his way or the highway, because he hasn't had to compromise the way the other guy has. So that in and of itself is a unique challenge. What else is challenging? Well, the dating landscape. Why? Because you'll be connecting with guys, perhaps in your age group, who might be seeking younger women. And you might be thinking, that's unfair. You might be thinking, it just, it's not cool that guys do that, but many guys will do that. Not all men, but many men. So I, I understand this part of the challenge. Second part of the challenge is you may have children. And if you have children, you have less time to date. And you also have guys who don't want children. If you don't have children, and want children, you'll be faced with a similar dilemma. Some guys already have kids and don't want any more kids or may not be ready for that step of the process because of their age. So children bring, a, even though they bring a lot of value and awesomeness, they also bring a set of challenges when you're dating. Whether you want children or you have children, this presents a challenge. <laughs> What's the next part of the challenge? Well, the shape and health of said men we're talking about right now women typically tend to take care of themselves more than guys. I mean, this is a value that you've been, for better or for worse, and sometimes it's for worse, indoctrinated with since you were born. Look a certain way, be fit, uh, take care of your skin, take care of what you eat, like all those things that guys haven't necessarily learned. You will reach a stage in which some of the guys who are reaching out to you with a lot of confidence are not appealing to you physically. You feel like, man, they look 20 years older than they are, and that might feel like a challenge. What else is a challenge? Well, let's call it out for what it is, the internet, right? When you were born, the internet didn't exist. When you started dating, the internet didn't exist. So now that the internet exists, there's a, a unique set of challenges, including you have to be able to present yourself online in a specific way if you want to participate in this world. And there's going to be guys who show up that are not who they say they are. 
And you need to learn how to make the distinction between who is worth your time and who isn't. And, and it's not as clear sometimes. And dating apps, right? Dating apps are, for, for all the grief they get, you get the benefit of having a huge pool of men to connect with, but so do they. They have a huge pool of women to connect with. And the feeling of being more disposable, the feeling of if it doesn't work, I can just swipe left or right and connect with 20 other people in 10 seconds, literally exists. So that presents a unique set of challenges. What else is a challenge if you're over 40 in your 40s or 50s and you're dating? Well, the, the other part of the story, which I didn't start with because it's not the first thing I want to talk about, but let's talk about it. It's you, <laughs> your own shit, right? Your own blind spots, which is things that you're not aware that you're doing that are turning off men. Things that you don't know that maybe you're experiencing or showing up as that make it less likely for guys to approach you, including not being approachable. Habits that you've built that make it less, challenge, less easy for you to enter a relationship or to attract someone. And beliefs about what's possible and what's not possible. The next part that makes this challenging is what we want and where we are in the world. This is the first time in human history where you can actually start designing what you want in a relationship that has nothing to do with property uniting with somebody else, or a family name being the important thing that carries through. Those things still have a part in relationships, but for the most part, if you have the blessing of watching me in your phone right now, it means you have more choices as a woman than at any point in history, which means you want more than your mom wanted. You want definitely more than your grandma wanted. So that's all cool. I think that's progress. Here's the challenging piece about that. Even though you want more, you want something that's spiritual in nature, physical in nature, emotional in nature, friendship based. You want security on one side. You want adventure on the other side. You want a best friend and a partner, someone who's a cheerleader to your needs, someone that can understand you, see you, witness you, embrace you, be there in good times and bad. The expectations that you and I have for a relationship are higher than ever in history, but we don't have better skills at, at any point in history. We're simply learning those skills right now, and some people are not learning them. They're going out and about thinking that you can wing this and enter a relationship. After all, it's the most natural thing in the world. But what's natural is to create something that typically doesn't work as well. What's unnatural, which you can learn, is how to create and develop skills of intimacy, skills of love, skills that allow us to emotionally relate to each other, that give us a far better chance of choosing the right partner and being the right partner, which is the counterpart of wanting something, is being that which is a resonant match to what you want. So that's the first part of the whole thing. If you're feeling like this stuff is hard, it's because it is. If you're feeling that there's things that make it harder for you as a woman to get what you want, it's because it's true. So I'm not here trying to say that there's no real challenges. But now that we understand what the challenges are, or some of them, there's more challenges out there, but these are big ones that we're talking about right now. What can you do about them? That's my whole thing. The world exists as it is, and we're doing what we can day by day, little by little to change it. But it's going to take more than perhaps this lifetime for things to be the way they should be. And you can either participate the way they are and make the most out of it, or you can say, I'm out, and this wasn't in the cards for me. Whenever somebody says this thing about love is not on the cards for me, I typically cringe inside because that might be a possibility, but the possibility that you don't know how to create what you want, how to navigate the world the way it is, how to set the right boundaries, how to qualify guys better than you do right now, how to have a better dating strategy, all those things are possibilities as well. So until you've exhausted all those possibilities, it's not fair to you, to yourself, to say that the love is not in the cards for you. Why? because there's other things that might be a stronger factor in your capacity to get what you want. So how do we shift this? Well, the first part of this mindset, and I can't emphasize this strongly enough, without this, I can see very little chance of sustainably getting what you want because what you have to do to get there is not easy. And that is defining a strong enough why that allows you to go through the shit times that you'll have to go through in the process of getting what you want. If you're going through the dating landscape, if you're putting yourself out there and the goal is to, for lack of a better term, in the crudest way possible, say, catch a husband, that is not strong enough to go through the stuff you'll have to go through. So you have to find within yourself all the reasons that beyond the guy, and they have to do with who you become as a woman, your capacity to express yourself more powerfully, 
your ability to open your heart in ways that you couldn't all on your own. The feeling of being seen, embraced, and loved by someone who wants the best for you. Your evolution in terms of communication and self-love and self-respect and self-reliance in the context of being with somebody else. The yearning to create interdependence versus just an independent life that is fun, but not as fun as, for me at least, spending it with the right person. Second part is that mindset has to do with how can I get what I want despite blank. So what does that mean? That means that there's definitely guys out there who all they want is to have sex with you. There's gonna be guys who will lie to you. There's gonna be guys who will cheat. There's gonna be people who claim to be someone they're not. There's going to be people who haven't worked on themselves, but they still put themselves out there and hurt people along the way. So because that exists, you can't just limit yourself and say, well, that's the turn for me to get what I, for me to experience the life that I want, but it's how can I get the experience that I want despite those things? The third thing, which basically many of you feel like it's a deterrent, but it's really not if you're connecting with the right guy, which is age. The weight of age, not just the weight of age, but how you interpret it and how you focus on it. And if that creates excitement versus shame, that will make a difference in how you show up in the world. And if you focus on your wisdom, or if you focus on you have three more wrinkles uh, now than three years ago. You can't control your age, but you can influence two different things in your life. One is health, and the other one is radiance. So health and radiance are far more important for you to focus on than your age, because your age is just a number. But how you deal with mental health what things you step into in the world to give yourself more chances to feel more aliveness, to have better blood to flow to your brain, which makes a significant difference in your capacity to experience the relationship you want, to sustain the relationship you want and to grow it, and how excited you are about life that shows up through your skin, through your eyes, in the way you speak, in the way you move, in the way you connect, in how you can open your heart or have it close to someone. That is the focus that you need to put your attention on instead of age. Instead of focusing on why it's so hard, the focus can be, if you choose it, how can you uniquely stand out? What are some of the things that you have to offer? Because you're probably pretty good at focusing on the things that you can't offer or you're not great at or the extra two pounds you have or maybe the extra wrinkle or maybe something that you feel is a deterrent for guys to connect with you. But instead of focusing on that, if you place the majority of your attention on how you can stand out through being you, not through being somebody else, not through copying anyone else, but through being you, which includes self-awareness, right? What are you great at? What are your assets? What are the things that you have to offer uniquely that no one else can bring right about the same way? Focus on expressiveness. How can you share the feelings that you have outside into the world where someone, including a man, can feel them in his chest and do something about it? Instead of feeling like, ah, it's cool, I don't have to connect with her, some extra degree of expressiveness moves him forward to connect with you. Emotional courage, right? Emotional courage is something that is a muscle that you can develop. And emotional courage is you don't want to connect with more guys because you feel like you might experience more pain, but you still choose to do it. You may not want to do that extra thing that allows you to feel excitement that day because, it's, because you're tired and you prefer to watch Netflix but you do it anyway. So developing emotional courage to express your needs, for example, when a guy shows up and you want to share who you are, but you're afraid he may not want you if you say this thing, but you say it anyways. You say it with kindness, but you don't shy away from speaking your truth. This type of focus on beyond why it's so hard to how can I stand out? How can my expressiveness, my uniqueness, and my voice allow me to be a hell yes or a hell no to someone versus a maybe to everyone? The next one is, instead of focusing on why apps don't work, is developing a conscious dating strategy. Think about it. When your grandma uh, wanted to connect with someone, she had to put on a dress and ask for permission and get a chaperone. And if she was lucky enough to go to the specific place where guys were meeting and it was okay to talk to them, she would have a small conversation 
Uh, and then like, it was so challenging. And now from the comfort of your home, getting a foot massage, you can swipe left and right and create connections with guys. Now, as I said, that brings about a specific set of challenges, but it also brings about a world of possibilities. So rather than thinking that apps don't work, is focusing on how can you develop a conscious dating strategy that allows you to have the safeguards that you need so that you don't waste your time and also the expressiveness that you need so that you can ask for what you want and figure out who's the best match for you. Now, on the first link in the description of this video, I've created a training that will show you many of the elements that I have created for a conscious dating strategy, how to stand out if you're dating, how to create a better strategy than the one you might be using. It's totally free. All you have to do is go to the first link, click on it, and you can start watching this free training right now. <laughs> Next is you. Next thing that can make a significant difference in your mindset is you. What version of you is coming to the table? The version of you that's burnt out, the version of you that's bitter, the version of you that's men sock, or the version of you that's saying, life can be what I want it to be, even if there's challenges. Getting emotionally, not sexually, emotionally turned on when you create connections is one of the strongest things you can do because the version of you that's fully lit up from the inside, the version of you that's more open, the version of you that's giving the guy a little bit of the benefit of the doubt before at the first sign of something that's not perfect, saying, I'm out, that version of you has more chances than the version of you who is uh, closing doors left and right without really stopping to take a deep breath and considering if it's worth turning, shutting that door or not. The last thing I'll say is that you can go from fe feeling like this shouldn't be happening to you, that you should be, shouldn't be happening to go through this, you shouldn't have to to learn more about this. Why aren't guys learning this? Now, let me tell you, first and foremost, many guys are learning this. At more than at any point in history, more men are going to therapy now than before. More guys are learning how they can be better men than before. Does it mean all the men are doing this? Absolutely not. But if you go from no man is doing this to some men are doing it, then you have choices. So the invitation for you right now is instead of saying, I'm gonna do this for a guy. You're not doing this for a guy. You're doing this for a better life. You're doing this to have a higher capacity to express yourself, you're using dating as a spiritual journey instead of a messy mechanism to catch a husband. Because when dating can be a spiritual practice and allow you to evolve in ways that you would absolutely not have had you not put yourself in that vulnerable position of expressing needs and figuring out what the other person wants, if you understand that fundamentally the dating process can be something that makes your life better irrespective of the specific guy you're connecting with, then you have true power. Hope this is helpful, useful, and insightful. If it is, I'm gonna ask you to do one thing. If you want to go beyond this video and understand how you can start creating a conscious dating plan that allows you to attract more of what you want and repel <laughs> more of what you don't want, then go to the first link in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Enter in an email and you can start watching my free training right away. If you enjoy this video, a few things. Click thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Uh, share with someone who might benefit from it. And last but not least, if you're watching me and you're saying, this makes sense, I get it. And I want to understand this specific part about how I can apply this, but this is different for me, here's why. Then there might be a chance for us to work together. And if you wanna find out if we're a great match to work so I can help you create the relationship you want in a fraction of the time, then the second link on the description of this video will allow you to do just that. Thank you so much for connecting with me. And as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.